Hello everyone, I hope that you're well. Um, today we're going to be moving on to distance time graphs. I'm going to make a video because I can't kind of find anything that I think is appropriate. Uh, so looking at the relationship between speed, distance and time, um, hopefully you've seen this before. Most of the time it's taught, it's taught like this that I feel a little bit funny about, but, but if you're comfortable with it, then I'll show you this way. Then I'll show you a method which I think is better, especially for distance time graphs. Okay, so... A lot of you are familiar with this triangle where S stands for speed, D stands for distance and T stands for time. I cover up the thing that I want, in this case it would be speed, leaving me with distance over time. So I know that speed equals distance divided by time. I think about my relationship between distance, speed and time. So cover up the thing that I want, in this case I'll cover up D that will leave me S T, so speed times time. Time is the one that I want, so I'll cover that up. That equals distance divided by speed. Those are essentially our formulas that we're gonna manipulate when we need to. I've given some scenarios here. So in this scenario, something travels 10 hours. Well, that's time. And it takes 70 miles, sorry, it travels 70 miles. Miles is a distance. Speed equals distance divided by time, as we said. I know that my distance is 70 and my time is 10. Therefore, my speed is 7. Now, I know teachers go a bit crazy about units, but if someone put seven, that would be ludicrous. How fast is seven? Seven what? Look at the units. Miles an hour. Seven miles per hour. So you can do miles, so we don't get confused. Let's do miles per hour. Often people put MPH and stuff like that, or if you're familiar with cars and stuff, that can get a little bit confusing because the M might stand for meters, etc. So let's just do it like that. Right. Here I have six hours. Hours is a time. I have five miles per hour. This time it's in that format. But I, for the sake of this question, I'm going to say that this is miles. Yeah. So miles per hour, that's a unit of speed. And I want distance. Distance equals speed times time. 6 times 5 is going to give me 30. 30 what? Well, it was miles per hour. Miles was the unit that was given. Therefore, miles is the unit that I need to put here because that's the distance. And finally, one more. 50 miles. 50 miles. That's a distance. Covered at five miles per hour. Miles per hour is a speed. Time equals distance divided by speed. Distance divided by speed. That's just gonna give me 10. 10 what? 10 hours. In the event that that had been 50 miles covered at 50 miles per second, Second would have been the unit of time and second would therefore be the time that's there. I stress this because each question is going to give different units. If you don't do the correct unit, you lose the marks. Right. That's kind of speed, distance, time. I don't think we really think about the relationship between these things. This is why I think this is better. So let's have a think about this. If someone travels at six miles per hour. Let's think about what that's saying. That's saying that for every one hour that passes, this person travels six miles. So six miles per one hour. Now, if I think about it like that, how far did they travel in two miles? In, sorry, in two hours. Well, that's easy, because if they travel six miles in one hour, they're obviously just going to be traveling in two hours. It's just going to be traveling, take twice as long, isn't it? Yeah? 
So therefore, this is a nice way about thinking about these things. Think about what speed is. It is the distance covered per unit of time. Let's think about a different scenario. So let's continue with, if someone travels at six miles per hour, how far did they travel in? Could do anything. Let's make it a unit less than that. So how far did they travel in 30 minutes? Hmm, that's a bit weird. So I'm messing around with the units here, but not a problem because if they travel at six miles per one hour, let's make that look a bit better. Six miles per one hour. How many minutes in an hour? Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour. So this is basically another representation of six miles per hour. I know that 30 minutes is just 60 minutes divided by two. Now I'm just going to divide it by two on this side as well. So that's just going to give me six divided by two will give me what's going to travel three miles per every 30 minutes. Yeah. And I can manipulate this loads of different ways if I want to. In theory, I could get to, so let's look just out of interest, one of the more complicated ones. Uh, let's call this, uh, let's say they travel at eight miles per hour. How far did they travel in 45 minutes? Interesting. Well, I always come back to, let's look at, it travels for every eight miles that they travel. It takes them one hour. I know one hour is 60 minutes. How do I get to 45 minutes? Well, I can't get directly from 60 to 45 minutes. I could if I use the fraction, I guess. But let's think of an intermediate step. Well... 15 is a common factor of both 60 and 45. So let's try and get to 15 minutes. Sixty divided by four equals fifteen. Therefore, eight divided by four, it takes two miles in every fifteen minutes. And 15 times 3 will give me 45 minutes. So I times 2 by 3, they would have travelled 6 miles in 45 minutes. Now, I'll show you this method because it's a lot easier to manipulate when it comes to certain speed distance time graphs. I'm basically going to give you sort of quite a long explanation, guys, with regards to these. So listen nice and carefully. If I have a distance time graph, this is my distance from home, and this is my time. Let's just think of an example. Well, let's do this person. I'm going to say that they started from home, and then they just traveled like this. So after a period of time, they stopped their journey, yeah? So let's call that, let's just call that one journey. I'm going to call this a different journey. Someone else has taken something else. Yeah. So they've started from home and then they've gone like this. So let's think about, I haven't really used much technical language there. I've done that on purpose. Let's think about the difference between their two journeys. Well, this one's obviously taken, covered less distance uh, and taken a longer time. And this one's covered more distance and it's covered less time. I'm going to ask you which one has gone at a greater speed. Hopefully we can recognize that the pink one has gone at a greater speed. The pink one has gone at a greater speed because that line is steeper. Steepness of line is called gradient. The gradient of a distance time graph is the speed. Let's write that nice and big. Put it in capitals. Gradient of a distance time graph is the speed. So if I made up some numbers for you, for instance, let's say this one has traveled 20 
and I knew that the unit was kilometers. And let's say it took two hours. So that's gonna be the gradient of this is I know it's gone 20 up and two across. 20 divided by two. And that makes sense because speed equals distance divided by time. So this one's traveled at 10, all important unit, kilometers per hour. Let's make up some units for these things here. Let's just say that that's traveled at say eight kilometers and let's say it's taken them twice as long so it's taken them four hours yeah gradient is distance up divided by distance across so eight divided by four this one's traveled at two kilometers per hour i didn't need those values i could have just seen it without any values because i know that gradient of distance time is speed Gradient of distance time is speed. Keep that in your head. Right, let's look at some crazy graphs. Not that crazy. So distance from home. I know that this, uh, I'll just talk you through different things. So this one has traveled at a constant speed because it's covering the same amount of distance per unit of time, i.e. the gradient is constant throughout all of it. Yeah, so this one has started at home and they've traveled at a constant speed. I guess they've gone reasonably quickly because the graph is quite steep. Well, let's have a think about this one. I could say that this one, well, they've started the journey already a distance from home. And how does their speed compare to the first one? It's less, the gradient's less steep, therefore they've gone at a slower speed. Here, this is really important, guys. Think about what's going on. Don't just look for the shape. Distance from home. Was well, the distance from home increased or decreased? No, it hasn't. The distance has remained exactly the same. Obviously, time continues because we don't have the ability to stop time or rewind time. So if something has no distance covered, but time obviously continues, it is stationary. This one is not moving. Yeah, we know that if the line is horizontal, it's not moving. So have a think about this one. So distance from home, apologies. Distance from home is suddenly shot straight up and it's literally taken no time at all. What? How can something take no time at all? Well, time is always increasing, isn't it? It has to. Yeah, as we just said, we can't stop time. This is an impossible graph. This graph would never exist. And finally, this time, the distance from home, it looks like these people are starting distance from home, and then their distance is getting closer and closer to zero from home, i.e. they're heading closer to home, and therefore, and then they come, uh, they come home at this point here. So they've moved at a constant speed because that line is straight, and then they've arrived home. Let's look at some 